right, what's going on, you guys? Nick here with Nick Strength and Power. I've got a couple of interesting stories for you guys today. The first story that I've got for you guys today, we've got to talk about the latest update from Urz Kalsinski. Now, these updates are from Urz's latest YouTube video, which was titled Five Weeks Out from the Olympia. So this was like a week and a half, two weeks ago. And look, I think Urz is generating a lot of conversation right now because he looks really impressive. I think the main thing that people are noticing is the fact that he looks bigger, he looks fuller, he looks more muscular, but obviously he still has that trademark Urz Kalsinski conditioning. You can clearly see that in this update. Always with the striated glutes, this guy. Now, Urz was top three at last year's Classic Physique Olympia behind Ramon Dino and obviously Chris Bumstead. The question is this year, can he improve upon that top three placing by bringing a bigger physique? That clearly seems to be his plan this year is to come in bigger because in years past, he really is one of the most conditioned guys in Classic Physique, if not the most conditioned guy. And I think that's been a big part of the reason why he's placed as high as he has, in addition to obviously his really classic structure. And of course, he's also going to have to fend off both Breon Ainsley and Terrence Ruffin, who are both going to be fighting for their spots. They want their spots back in that top three there this year. And everybody seems to be taking advantage of this increase, uh, this weight limit increase. Even Chris Bumstead seems to be looking bigger. Now, we haven't really seen much from Ramon Dino going into this show. So we're not really too sure how he's looking, but I would argue that we're probably, this is probably one of the best versions I think that we've seen of Urs Kalsinski. Maybe not the most conditioned version, but I think this is what he needed to improve on was to come in bigger. He was already beating most of these guys on conditioning alone, but now here he is seemingly as conditioned as ever, and he looks significantly bigger. And we know that in the off season, he got up to what, 270, 275, which I think is the biggest he's ever pushed it in the off season. And there's really no denying it. I think he looks incredible. I'm curious to hear your guys' predictions in the comments below for Classic Physique. Do you think Urz can move up and find himself in the top two spot? I, fi I still find it hard to think that anyone is going to unseat the king, Chris Bumstead, right now. And I think that, honestly, it'll be Chris and Ramon battling it out again this year. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Do you think Urz could find himself in that top two conversation with this new and improved physique that he seems to be bringing? Now, I think it's also worth mentioning that another guy that seems to be taking advantage of this weight increase is Mike Sommerfeld. He was fifth place at last year's Olympia in Classic Physique, and he looks really good in the latest updates that we've seen from him as well. And again, he looks bigger. All these guys really do look like they've put on some size. All these top guys in Classic Physique really look like they've made some major improvements um, in terms of growing into this Olympia and taking advantage of this weight limit increase. And Mike is one of the shorter guys, so he probably is going to get a little bit more of a weight advantage than maybe Urs. But it's going to be interesting to see how this new weight dynamic plays out as far as the first call out in the Classic Physique Olympia. Could we see these placings really change up from what they were last year because we see such differences in these guys' physiques. I think we really are going to see um, some very different packages from these guys. And I think if you look at the improvements that even Terrence was able to make at the past couple of shows that he did, the, the different version of his physique that we got to see, I think we've got a real battle in store for us with, with the classic physique division. And then yesterday, we did get some more updates of Chris Bumstead, some black and white updates of him doing some hanging ab raises, um, and obviously showing that despite the fact that he looks bigger, he clearly is not suffering, uh, or his midsection is not suffering at all because of the increase in size. He looks fantastic here. And I think a lot of people are interested to see how Chris looks here too, because we've had kind of this conversation about Chris where he put up the post about, you know, how this prep has been different and how it's been harder for him and how he had a really rough start to the beginning of this prep. And he did that post um, where he was kind of musing about retirement. And then we saw Ian Valier announce his retirement. But it seems like Chris had had some issues, nothing that he was really specific about, but he definitely vocalized that this had been a, a difficult prep for him. So I think a lot of people are interested to see, you know, what the final product for him is going to be on stage and if, you know, whatever was going on with this prep is going to impact his look or whatever. Uh, but to me, everything we've seen from Chris, even though he's been posting kind of sparingly, he looks really impressive. He looks on track. And you certainly can't really tell by looking at him if he had any difficulty with his prep. So I'm looking forward to seeing this classic physique lineup. I think it's going to be a good show. But let me know your top let me know your top six classic physique predictions in order here at, what are we, three weeks out now from the Olympia? It's crazy. Now, next up in the news, we've got another physique update from Brandon Curry. This is at three and a half weeks out. Just the most muscular, just the top half, and he's got a tank top on. But again, I, I've got to say the same thing that I've been saying about these Brandon Curry updates. He looks really impressive. He looks round. He looks full. He looks like he's in shape, just a typical Brandon Curry. And I've got to wonder if writing him off 
was a mistake. Like I said, I think it's been kind of easy to get carried away talking about Nick Walker, Samson Dowda, Derek Lunsford as being the potential top three guys, but I feel like people really are forgetting about Brandon. And I can see, I can visualize a scenario where Brandon finds himself back in that top three fighting for the title. It certainly doesn't look like he's done. And again, I do think a lot of the omission of Brandon's name from all these prediction videos and stuff definitely came from the fact that he didn't really post much at all this year in between the last Olympia and this one. You didn't really see him much. He wasn't doing very many guest posings. He wasn't really posting too many training videos or posing videos. You just didn't see much of him. So I think it was easy for people to kind of leave him out of the equation. But now that we're seeing these updates, I think he looks really impressive. And again, I don't think it's going to be a question of has Brandon fallen off. I think he looks as good as he did here um, as the year that he won the Olympia. I think it's more of a question of the quality of competition is just, I think it's more competitive now than it was when Brandon won. And the question is how well will he hold up with these new guys? But as always, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Now, next up in the news, we did get a physique update, opposing video at around three and a half weeks for Nathan Diasha as well, three and a half weeks out from the Olympia. Now, he says that he can go, and he says that he's going to be there, and he will compete at the Olympia this time. So we'll see. Obviously, he's been looking really good. He's won multiple shows. He's won 11 now total pro shows. But this year alone, he's won multiple shows. And in years past, when he qualified for the Olympia, he had won multiple shows in the process of qualifying, like last year's Olympia. We just didn't get to see him there. And I hope that we do, because I do think that of all these guys that we've got qualified right now, and we talked about the qualified competitor list in the last video, I think Nathan is really one of the guys that stands a chance of being in the top 10. And he's been in the top 10 before, but that was half a decade ago. But it's worth pointing out that this year you do have a much smaller lineup than you had last year. Last year you had, I believe, 36 guys qualified for last year's Olympia. This year you only have 24, and we already know of several of them that are not doing it. So the IFBB did achieve their goal of, of cutting down the number of guys at the Olympia because they said there's not going to be a points qualification system this year, and that was the main motivation in doing that, and it looks like it certainly worked. And we know that Ian and Rami are out, and Beirut's Tabani is struggling with getting a visa. So that's about 20 guy, 21 guys, so more than a dozen less guys than last year, which is pretty significant to have a 30% smaller list. But let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Do you think Nathan will crack the top 10 at this year's Olympia, and do you think he will, in fact, be there? Now, the final story that I've got for you guys today, we got a recent update from Charles Griffin at three weeks out from the Olympia. Charles obviously just won um, the Legion Sports Festival to qualify. A lot of people were talking about how impressive he looked at Legion, the level of conditioning that he brought. Just pretty impressed with his package overall at that show, especially considering the fact that he had torn his pec um, just like months before, maybe five months before. And it was kind of noticeable on stage. You could kind of see where the injury had happened. But he was in such good shape, and he just looked so good that you didn't really notice it and didn't really, I don't think it held him back at all. But in a similar vein as the, the conversation about Nathan, I think Charles has a real shot at being a top 10 guy this year. I think he's he really surprised a lot of people with how good he looked at Legion. And I think he's really going to surprise a lot of people with how well he does at the Olympia. I think he's got a chance at being a top 10 guy. That's how good I think he looked at this Legion show. And I think if he brings a similar package or better to the Olympia, he's going to do some real damage. And honestly, I actually preferred Charles' look to Nathan's last look. So I think Nathan and Charles would be pretty good in a call-out together. I think they're pretty neck and neck, which is a pretty big compliment to Charles to compare him to Nathan, a guy that's won like a dozen shows. So that's going to wrap it up for the video today, guys. I hope you did, in fact, enjoy it. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, click that bell notification icon so you never miss an upload. And as always, I love you guys. appreciate you guys. Nick Strength and Power signing out. All right, guys, don't forget to click that like button and subscribe to this channel if you enjoy the content. Also, check out my Instagram at Nick Strength Power, my Facebook page, which is simply Nick Strength and Power, my secondary YouTube channel, Nick Strength and Vlogs, for vlogs and bonus content that you will not see on this channel. And consider subscribing to my third YouTube channel, Nick Strength and Pokemon, which is all things Pokemon and trading card games completely unrelated to this channel. So if you're into that, Give that one a look, and all links to merchandise and social media will be in the description box below. If you guys want a Nick Strength and Power t-shirt, that will be in the Shopify link below. Have a great day.